Welcome back. I'm going to be breaking down the art style of Arc System Works, mainly their work in Guilty Gear Strive. Now, this is a big task and way too much cover in one video, and there is already a pretty good GDC talk that breaks down the full process. It's pretty technical, and it might take a few watches to really get through the, get through the whole process down. But fortunately for you, I've already watched it and used the techniques in my own artwork. I just keep getting comments asking me for tutorial on how I got the shaders, so here it finally is. Now there's way too much to cover in just 15 minutes, so I'll be covering the most requested part, the creation of the shaders for Unreal Engine. This will be part one, the cell shader. I'll be releasing a second video in the next couple days, which will cover making the outlines. Now to start, I downloaded a RIP model of Ramethal from Guilty Gear Strive. I'll be providing the original link in the description, which also has a weapon and weapon textures if you're interested. But I'll also be giving a zip file, which has the exported RAM model and the RAM outline, as well as three texture files. The RAM base map has the default RAM coloring, RAM SSS, which is the primary shadow color, and the RAM ILM map which is a special pack map used to store various information into the channels such as the spec map, AO, shadow map, baked line work. Now let's get started. First thing first, you can see the way the model looks with just the default gray texture. So we're, we obviously start by creating a new material. In order to get the look right, we can't have any specular, any metallic, so left click in the viewport and grab a constant. Duplicate the constant once. Plug a zero into the metallic and a zero into the specular. Then plug a one into the roughness map. For step two, we'll be creating a basic cell shader. So left click and pick vertex normals, world space. Then we want to left click again and pick the atmosphere sunlight vector. We then click again and pick dot, pick dot. We have to multiply the sun vector by our vertex normal. This will give us a default cell shading or rather the default lighting. This is also why your normals are extremely important because your light will be completely determined by your normal direction. Arc System Works took quite a bit of time and edited every normal inside their model so that it would get the anime aesthetic. But we're actually using a model with the normals already edited. Good for us. We then left click and choose a scalar parameter. Label this something like band depth or shadow band depth. This will determine the size of your shadow band. I set the default values to 1 and minus 1 respectively, and then you plug that into the B slot. If you copy over your 0 and 1 constant and bring them over, you can plug them in and see your anime lighting at work. As you can see, it's already starting to get a pretty good stylized result. Not sure if any remember the, this old game, but with just this, it's starting to remind me of an old game called Beautiful Joe. Maybe in the future we might try a beautiful gel shader, but I digress. Just by adding, I'm just adding comments here to help keep everything organized. Next, you want to go ahead and bring in your three texture maps. If you take the RAM base and plug it into the A is less than slot, followed by, in, followed by adding the SS to the two slots, you will get a basic cell shader. If you want, you can actually stop at this point because this is what a lot of games actually stop at, like Breath of the Wild. But if you want a more detailed look, we can keep on going. Gonna move these back a little bit to give myself a little more room.
but take the output of the base texture and drag a multiply node off of it. We will be using the multiple node quite a bit, so I'd recommend duplicating it a couple times. But you want to take the alpha channel from your ILM texture and plug it into the B slot of the multiple node. Multiply node, sorry. The, the burned lines are stored in the alpha channel of the ILM node, ILM map. Then plug that into the A is less than B node. I'm sorry, A is greater than B node. You should be able to see some interior lines that have been added to our model. Next, you want to drag a node from your SS texture and select the Multiply Add. You want this to be your base color. Then drag a node from the Multiply and add it to the Add node. From there, plug the results into the A is equal to B and A is greater than B. Next, we are going to be working with the Ambient and Inclusion. You want to grab two Multiply nodes like this. Then we also need to add another scalar node. We can label this one AO intensity and give it a default values. Once we finish and connect it back to the AO, we will then add a dark version of our interior lines to the shadow portion of our textures. Once we do this, we can reconnect it back into the emissive node. I'm going to move these back to give myself a little more space, but next we're going to add your spectral highlights that are in the texture map. I'm going to create another scalar parameter and label this one specular power. I'm then going to grab a few multiple no multiply nodes, then plug them into each other. Then going to drag off and add a clamp node. You then want to take the blue channel for, from our ILM texture and plug this back into our first multiply node. This will start to give us the burned highlights during the texture. But before that, I'm going to add one more multiply node and drag off a vector parameter. I'm going to change the name to highlight tint and add the default color to white. Then we will again add another multiply node. Now you see why I told you to duplicate it so many times. Then take the output of the highlight multiple node, multiplied node and add it to the blend slot. Put it, put it back and you have the basic highlights. Next, you want to go back to our dot node and drag off a three point levels node.
drag all from the middle points node and make another scalar parameter. Label this one spec angle. And this is what will determine at what angle your highlights start to show. So this is why we dragged off from the original dot node. So in other words, when you're in darkness, your highlights won't show. Grab two more constants, plug the zero into the black to the new black value and new middle value. You can plug the one into the new white value. Take the results and plug them back into the multiply node. And there you have it, your new highlights show, but not in the shadows. And this is basically the entire tutorial. I try to be as quick as possible. Hopefully you guys liked it and got something out of it. If you want to see me create more stylized graphic tutorials, please consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments how I can improve.